just will together lift that him when my anticipation to be quite honest with you in january is when we start talking about the windy city um and we did not have this pandemic this coronavirus we were not dealing with that and so in january you know we were all looking forward to uh, the windy city to take place in july a couple of themes had come across the table but then when the pandemic hit and it forced us to do some innovative things such as uh, zooming and and youtubing and facebooking all of the social media kinds of things it forced us to do some things we have never done before not only in the church but this has been national i'm in the education system and we have to we had to scramble to try to find ways to communicate with our students at both the secondary and in higher education this has been a real you might say a scratch your head kind of experience so in reference to the church we still have to be proactive we still have to move with fidelity well we felt that it would be of great benefit not only to the churches but we have a number of good preachers in the local area who have not had an opportunity to speak at the national lectureship and um, it was an idea that we would give them visibility, give them that opportunity of being able to be on an organized lectureship program. Uh, and they responded well. It was a great response to it. As a matter of fact, the congregations enjoyed it as much as we did. The first Windy City lectureship occurred in 2009. And this is the year 2020, so this is the 11th consecutive Windy City lectureship uh, to be held in the city of Chicago. When we first began, we had uh, preaching each night for four nights, and we had initially, for a couple of years, we had a youth workshop on Wednesday that was to help bring the youth out to give them the opportunity to ask questions, to be involved in an interactive setting, and that worked out fine. And then we moved to not only having a youth workshop, we had uh, pastoral workshops, uh, we had biblical studies workshops. And I think what really kind of turned, turned it up a notch was when the, uh, the round table was instituted for about four years ago. That really proved to be effective because my interpretation, or I should say my conviction, is that we have the doctrine. We have the unadulterated doctrine. And if we can teach our people the doctrine, that makes a difference. And so what happens is that in the round table, there are a series of questions that the audience has an opportunity to ask as it is evolving around a particular subject. For example, it might evolve around the work on the ministry of the Holy Spirit. I don't know, baptism, um, is the Bible reliable, things of that nature. And so the panelists have an opportunity to respond to questions that emanate not only from the audience, but there are people who call in and they ask questions regarding these subjects. So that has been very effective, very effective. We, we're in a technological society uh, whereby we have to keep up with the times. And, and we have a different generation than when I came up. You know, some things don't work today like they used to work, you know, 35, 40 years ago. So we have to find a way to still be effective in our outreach. And thanks be to God, we do have people and, and I have no problem saying this, like Carolyn and Bobby Dean, who are in the uh, light and salt ministry. They're in this ministry, it's a ministry, and they're able to do some things for all of the churches to keep us on the same page with you know, NBC and CBN and other network stations. So I thank God for them. My excitement is, again, because I, I've been able to communicate 
with preachers across the nation and not have to worry about having to find a way to fly them in for them to be put up. Um, they can do this electronically. So it gives us a wider base of preachers. Uh, we're not just confined to, it is the Windy City. It will always be the Windy City. And we will always be in the business of exposing our preachers in this area. But at the same time, it gives us a wide latitude, a wide selective attitude where we can ask, say a preacher from, you know, the north, northernmost point in the country to send us uh, a sermon and, and still have that same effect. So we're going to be um, inviting everyone to be a part of this virtual Windy City Lectureship. Uh, it will be on Facebook, it will be on YouTube, uh, it will be in many of the social media outlets, and you will have an opportunity to hear some preachers that perhaps you have not heard before. Um, there will be more information. We will have a, a, a roster of the names of the preachers with their subjects. To be quite honest with you, the theme this year, I'll share with you the theme. The theme is when the trumpet is expected, the flute will not suffice. That's the theme. When the trumpet is expected, the flute will not suffice. And we're building this around our articulating the message for the master. The reason that theme was chosen was because of the crisis that we're in. Uh, we are, we're faced on two fronts now. We have a visible enemy and an invisible enemy. The invisible enemy, of course, is the coronavirus. And with uh, Mr. George Floyd being killed by Minnesota police officers, that has created another pandemic, so to speak. And so we have to be, again, proactive in trying to get people to understand that this is a different society. We have a different mindset of people but we still have to address them and present them with the gospel of Christ. Whoa, when we reach that city of the new Jerusalem, oh, we're gonna sing, hallelujah. yeah, we're gonna sing, hallelujah. whoa, by and by. Oh, how the ransom singers will together live